the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. My good people, we have assembled here to celebrate this mystery of our salvation. And we first begin by acknowledging our sinfulness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may ever be watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the book of prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. And I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold. And they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, 
and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely. He shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, do 
Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both Jews and Gentiles into one, and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So Christ Jesus came and proclaimed peace to you who are far off and peace to those who are near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles returned for their mission. They gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and touched. He said to them, Come away at this third place all by yourself and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they have no pleasure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from the old towns and arrived ahead from, of them. As Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he has compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. dear people of God. We all have some experience of how important balance is in our lives. And I don't just mean our bank balance, but the balance that comes from keeping things in proportion. The cook that uses too much garlic or not enough salt knows about balance. The young child who tries to ride a bicycle for the first time often learns the hard way about balance. We talk about a balanced diet, a balanced life, a balanced disposition. We seem to know how important it is 
not to let things get out of balance. Jesus also knew about balance. He recognized that his disciples were getting out of balance with all that they were doing. So he said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. They had just returned from their mission and Jesus knew they needed some personal refreshment. Through today's scriptures, we too are called to care for others. And we are also called to allow others to care for us. When in Jeremiah we hear about the shepherds who must take care of the sheep, some of us may think only of the priest as shepherd. We call our priest pastors because the word pastor is the Latin word for shepherd. The work the priest does is pastoral work or the work of the shepherd. So the priest is obviously a shepherd to those who have been entrusted to his care. But what about other shepherds? Are we not all shepherds in some way? Do we not all have some responsibilities for other people? Each of us is called to minister to others through our baptism and confirmation. We have received that gift of ministry. In fact, the Lord, through these sacraments, directly chooses all of us for ministry. I think it would be helpful if we become more conscious of some of the ways in which we minister. And if this is so, then it becomes easier to see that in our life of relationships, within and without our families, we are often ministering without really, really using the word. When parents accept their children with a love that is unconditional, they make it possible for their children to believe in a God who loves them without any conditions attached. When these same parents continually offer forgiveness to their children, are they not preparing their children for belief in a God who offers forgiveness always and everywhere? The physical loving union of a husband and wife is a ministry when it helps each of them to believe in a God who is love. When friends remain faithful to each other throughout the ups and downs of life, it becomes so much easier for them to believe in the abiding faithfulness of a faithful God. So these are all ways in which we are shepherds for one another, and we can learn so much about God through our everyday relationships. Besides caring for others, we also must care for ourselves. It is good for us to recognize that Jesus was encouraging the disciples to stop and to care for themselves. To love others, we must take care that we do not run out of the resources we need or that, or that for that work, if we are too tired, too tense, too busy, how will we properly take care of a husband, a wife, or children, or parents? Sometimes we try to give too much with too little. In the end, everyone gets hurt, and we end up in burnout, or at least very tired and perhaps irritable. Those whom we want to help end up without the help we wanted to give them. So when we get out of balance, there is a danger we will also throw out of balance the lives of the people whom we love. And we can end up becoming a burden to others 
when we fail to take care of ourselves. There is a story told of two hikers who were walking through the woods and they were confronted by a bear. And immediately one of the men took off his boots and pulled on a pair of track shoes and began putting them on. And his friend turned to him and said, what are you doing? We can't outrun the bear, even with jogging shoes. But the other man replied, who cares about the bear? All I worry about is outrunning you. Now, some people, like that first hiker in the story, think that if we take care of ourselves, it means we are neglecting to take care of others. But it is really the opposite. When we take care of ourselves, we are much better able to bring our love and concern to others. Becoming exhausted or having a heart attack is not going to be much use when we want to help others. And so we all need a proper amount of rest and leisure. The scriptures tell us even God rested on the seventh day. This was the Bible's way of urging us to also take some needed rest. And part of that rest, that leisure as a follower of Jesus, should be sent, spent in times a prayerful reflection and spiritual reading. For these two activities can help us gain perspective on the rest of our lives. Without time for reflection, we can get stuck in harmful ways of acting or negative thought patterns, which will drag us down. And so as we continue our journey with the Lord, Ask him to help us to care for those to whom we are sent and to allow others to care for us. Together now, let us profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring our needs to God, to the God of glory, who has come, who has come close to us in Christ. Amen. 
that all who serve the community of believers will witness to the Lord's presence through their ministry of charity. We pray to the Lord. That our, our living and merciful God will guide and bless the life and ministry of Father William Meehan, Father Louis Inaccio Cordero, who were just ordained for the service in the Diocese of Hamilton. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians will guard the dignity of all God's people, especially the unborn, the poor, the marginalized, the elderly, the infirm, the oppressed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer from neglect, abuse, violence, or oppression, especially those who suffer due to domestic violence, will know the Lord's healing presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ, the Prince of Peace, will bless and comfort all who are suffering because of warfare or violence, especially the people of the Holy Land and Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the power of Christ, risen from the dead, may give comfort and healing to all those who are suffering, whether in body, mind, or spirit, especially the sick of our parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the glory of the resurrection will shine on all the faithful departed, especially Lloyd Weber and the deceased members of our parish family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Lady to pray with us and to pray for, for us as we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 689, The Lord's My Shepherd, number 689. <laughs>
my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Praise the Lord, for our good. O God, who in the in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion the varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift your to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. And by the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name and therefore o, o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit Graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sa sacrificial victim by whose death you will to, to reconcile us to yourself Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, St. Bartholomew, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the feast and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servants Francis our Pope, Douglas our Bishop, his associate Bishop Wayne, and all the, at the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, and there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our offertory hymn is number 711, Lord of All Power, number 711.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, dear God. God.